Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sailbox for the week beginning the 14th of October 2013. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up the weekly Steam deals, which refresh every Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's the big green box in the spotlight up to the top right, which may or may not be there by the time that I actually start this. Regardless, let us begin, shall we? With a look at Ares Extinction Agenda, 75% off. That is $2.50, €2.49, and £1.74. Did a video on this quite some time ago, actually, and I found it a pretty enjoyable Metroidvania-esque game. And I know that people are perhaps getting sick of the term Metroidvania, but in this case, it's really quite literal because the game is very Metroid-like. It's a really nice, colorful side-scroller with a fantastic soundtrack by Hyperduck Soundworks. I still play that soundtrack now to this very day. It's one of my personal favorites from indie titles. So this might be a game you want to check out. It's a good price for it. And if you are into Metroid-style games on PC, then this is certainly one of the better ones. Naval Warfare, 50% off, taking it down to $2.49, €2.49, and £2.24. So this is a bit of a bog-standard twin-stick shooter. The interesting thing about it, I suppose, is that it is on the water. You play as a boat. And it's got a pretty neat aesthetic to it as well. Certainly not generic. Something of a fantasy Victorian era kind of thing. I wouldn't go as far as to say steampunk, but it's got a decent aesthetic to it. The main problem that I have with it is that it's just not particularly good past that point. It doesn't have anything going for it that I would say, yeah, you need to check this out. Especially considering the big, big elephant in the room when it comes to twin sticks on PC, which is the existence of Renegade Ops, which is just better than almost everything I ever suggest on this show when it comes to twin stick shooters. So I think this one is probably an avoid unless you really love the idea of top-down boat warfare with a twin-stick style. Personally, it's not something that I can recommend. Looks nice, doesn't really have a lot of substance. Post-apocalyptic mayhem, 75% off. That is $2.49, €2.49, and £1.49. I have this strange fondness for this game. It's a fairly basic combat racer, but it has decently designed tracks, admittedly not really enough of them, fun vehicle design, and has a really nice arcadey handling style. Lots of power sliding, lots of boosting in nitro, lots of, oh god, I'm flying at 500 miles per hour thanks to all this motion blur kind of thing going on with it. And that's actually enough for me to recommend it, honestly. It really is. I had a good time with post-apocalyptic mayhem. The main problem is that it just lacks content in general, especially on launch. Saying, oh yes, you need to pay $10 for this was a little bit of a difficult sell, simply on the basis that no one was playing it online, and there really weren't all that many tracks. There were like three. You've got to bear in mind now that the base game actually does include new vehicles as well as new tracks, which is pretty nice. Initially, if I recall correctly, when they released the DLC pack called Chaos, that actually split the very small community in two, which was not a very smart thing to do at all. But now they include all of the tracks in the base game. So yeah, it's it's a bunch of fun. The AI is pretty good. If you have a few friends to play it with, you can buy it in a three pack as well. It's definitely worthwhile. But don't really expect to get a huge amount of life out of it. Yeah, It's good for a few plays and that's really about it if you're looking for a fairly amusing combat racing game. Retro City Rampage, 67% off, which takes it down to $4.99, €4.75, and £3.99. Retro City Rampage is a bit of a weird one, and it's because it comes from a demake of Grand Theft Auto. That's initially what it was, and then it was changed to be a full-release game. It's one of those games that if it came out 20 years ago, it would probably be hailed as the best game of that generation, because it had so much going on with it. Right now, it's in this weird spot between the modernization of certain mechanics and the retro appeal, and I'm not sure it really strikes either chord as well as it could, but I did have a decent amount of fun with it, and I like the fact that there's a massive amount of variety. It's also one of those retro-inspired titles that doesn't fall into the trap of having a weak retro aesthetic, yeah? The 8-bit style. Which the game does emulate, certainly, but it does it well. A lot of these so-called 8-bit games end up looking hideous, and that's really problematic. But the graphic style and the aesthetic used in Retro City Rampage is, in my opinion, nice and colorful and genuinely attractive to the eye. So, yeah, it might be worth a shot, especially if you are looking for a retro-inspired title. It is 
essentially a demake of GTA, even if it's not called that anymore. So you should expect some similar mechanics. It's got this kind of weird amount of freedom to it, which doesn't really fall in line with the other retro mechanics within the game, because you simply wouldn't have got that degree of freedom in older titles. But it sits in this rather curious place that actually makes it rather enjoyable and just that little bit unique. So yeah, absolutely. It's definitely worthwhile. 30 Flights 11, 60% off, taking it down to $2, 2 euros and £1.60. This is a strange one indeed. The success at the Gravity Bone, which was a free narrative game, that's probably the best way to describe it. It's one of those games where I felt I was just too stupid to understand the subtext. It's obviously narratively driven, it's chock full of interesting references, and it's got a lot of intriguing story points that it doesn't quite explain and it does that on purpose and I have a feeling that if you were to fully understand everything within the game you'll get an awful lot out of it. Personally I am obviously just too dumb to get everything. I understood a degree of it but not all of it and I think that at this price point it's definitely worth the experience. That and Gravity Bone can be beaten in about 30 to 35 minutes so it is definitely not a long experience and the amount that they were asking for it may have been at the time unreasonable but for two dollars I think you'll have a unique time with it. You might not like it but you'll definitely remember it. Riggin Roll, 75% off, that takes it down to $5, 5 euros and £3.74. It's a truck racing game for the most part, with a little bit of a sim aspect to it, although not too much. It really isn't anything to write home about. It's not a stacked genre by any stretch, even though there's a lot of simulation games coming out lately. And in fact, the only good truck racing game that I remember was 18 Wheel Pro Trucker, which was on the Sega Dreamcast and in the arcades. If you want to drive a truck and do so in a game, the best way to do that is Euro Truck Simulator 2, which is regarded as the best in the genre and actually very accessible to people. This, unfortunately, doesn't really do anything well. It's merely competent at what it does, and as a direct result, unless you have a major interest in playing a truck racing game, then I would personally avoid this one. Sengoku. 75% off. That takes it down to $2.50, 2 euros, 50 and 2 pounds. Yes, it's another Paradox Grand strategy. We seem to be getting at least one of these every week. This one is based around Japanese intrigue in the 15th century. The opinions on this one are fairly mixed, honestly. It is one of those games that seems to have divided the people that like Paradox Grand strategies. The biggest problem that most people seem to express is the fact that the game basically has no tutorial to speak of out of the box, and it lacks in terms of any good feedback at all. Paradox Grand Strategies are not games that I personally wade into, but I can tell you for a fact that this is definitely not regarded as one of the stronger ones. Admittedly, it may be something you would like to check out if you happen to be interested in that particular period of time. Just bear in mind, you're probably going to have to go digging on YouTube to watch somebody play it to figure out exactly what's going on, because the game certainly will not tell you how to do it properly. <laughs> Death Track Resurrection, 75% off, takes it down to $1.74, 1 euro 49 in tier 1, 124 in tier 2, and £1.49. It was a remake of the old Death Track games, which were certainly rather interesting for the time. Death Track Resurrection is not very good, especially not these days. It's very, very outdated. This is a game that came out over six years ago. Time has not been kind to it, and frankly, it just wasn't very good to begin with. I really dislike the handling. I was hoping it would be good because I do like car combat games, but Death Track Resurrection was simply not good enough to catch my interest. I think the worst thing about it would have to be the handling of the cars. You'd think a game like that would have some nice arcadey power slidey handling, which had a decent amount of weight to it. No, it was, it's actually really, really twitchy, which was very irritating and meant that you couldn't really have those really fun moments that you find in other games where you get to power slide around a corner while opening fire with twin miniguns or whatever. It doesn't really work all that well, and honestly, the AI cheats so hard in that game, so I'm not really interested in playing too much more of it. The game also doesn't let you progress unless you make top three, which can be really bad against the cheating AI and incredibly frustrating. So I am afraid not. Yeah, of the two combat racing games on offer in this particular sale, this would be the one that I would not pick up. 
Elemental, 50% off, takes it down to $5, 4 euros and £3.49. I have only limited experience with this. I would actually recommend if you want to know more about it, Northern Lion has a let's look at of it, which is very in-depth. It's for the most part an indie puzzle platformer. I like the aesthetic of it, and the thing which I enjoyed doing in this game was anything involving momentum, yeah, and the game does have a decent amount of that. It actually reminded me a little bit of Tiny Wings, which was uh, pretty awesome when you're able to uh, slide down and use your momentum in order to carry you through to the next objective. Might be a little bit of fun for those of you looking for puzzle platforming action. I would suggest that you do go and have a look at that video though if you want to know more. Disciples 2, 75% off, taking it down to $1.62, €1.49 and £1.24. I have got to say that if you're looking for something of a Heroes of Might and Magic style of fantasy turn-based game, then Disciples 2 is really good. Do not be fooled by Disciples 3, for it is not even close. It's a little dated, unfortunately. Galleon's Return is the compilation pack, which includes Servants of the Dark and the Guardians of Light. They also have Rise of the Elves for a similar price, which is a very good expansion indeed. It is a little dated. They yeah, expect to play it in 4x3 resolution, but the art style is a little bit timeless, kind of like Heroes of Might and Magic 3 in that respect. It's a really cool, dark world, and I think you're going to find a lot of enjoyment from it. The problem is as to whether or not you can actually get it running properly on modern PCs. Some people have reported issues with Windows 7 64-bit as well as Windows 8 operating systems. However, there do appear to be a couple of workarounds. Running the game in Windows 98 compatibility mode seems to work fairly well, Though you may also have to run it in window mode to get it to work correctly. You might have to mess around with it. That's the real problem with some of these Steam games. They generally don't tell you as to whether or not the title is fully compatible with modern systems, which as far as I'm concerned is a rather extreme oversight when it comes to the Steam store. So just be wary. You may have to tweak it a little bit in order to get it running on modern operating systems. But in my opinion, it's very worth it. Yeah, very much so. It is a really solid title. Jagged Alliance 2 Gold, 75% off, takes it down to $5 at 5 euros and 3 pounds 49. They're also listing Jagged Alliance Online, the Shadow and the Ivan edition. Let's just put it this way. Jagged Alliance 2 is one of the best tactical turn-based strategy games you will find. It is very, very good at what it does, incredibly so and is based around the idea of running a company of mercenaries and taking jobs around the world. It is fantastic. A little dated, as I've mentioned for certain other titles. Again, you'll experience it in 4x3, and you may have to tweak it in order to get it running on modern operating systems, but it is one of the best tactics games you will find on PC. Unfortunately, its follow-ups have been anything but, and Jagged Alliance Online is really no exception. They essentially ended up making it a browser-based game, with monetization and microtransactions, which is hardly, I think, what people were looking for from a Jagged Alliance game. If you haven't played Jagged Alliance 2, you kind of owe it to yourself to try it if you can get past the user interface, which is a little clunky, as many games from that era happen to be, but good luck finding a significant number of better turn-based tactical games because they simply do not exist. And finally, Little Inferno. 50% off takes down to $5, 4 euros 49 in tier 1, 3 49 in tier 2, and 3 pounds 49. This is a strange one because it doesn't really have much game to the game. But you wouldn't really just call it a toy either. It does have scoring, it's got things like combos, but it doesn't really have a lot of gameplay. It's basically about burning things in different combinations and then following the very strange Tomorrow Corporation story. This is, of course, from the company that brought you World of Goo, so it's a little odd to say the least. I think it's worth playing just to experience what the hell's going on. It's a really strange project and it's still very hard to classify. As far as I'm concerned, that's a selling point. You don't get a lot of games like Little Inferno. It may not leave you completely satisfied, but perhaps the inner pyromaniac in you will take a little bit of joy from it. All right, folks, that's me done for the sale box. Thank you very much for watching. Next sale kicks off on the 21st of October 2013, kicking off on Monday. I'll see you next time.